Cell culturing is a technique used in biological practices to discreetly investigate cell populations outside of their native environment. This is conducted under extremely sterile and controlled environments as to not contaminate the cells and to hinder their survival. The goal of cell culturing is to study cell fate decisions and behaviors upon introducing different therapies or controlled parameters for drug screening purposes and in the development of vaccines and medical treatments. As one could imagine, cell culturing encompasses various manual procedures. Two main experiments conducted to culture stem cells, the cells of interest to this project, include seeding and extraction, which both require tedious pipetting action. Current manual methods of conducting cell culturing experiments are rather tedious and time-consuming, and they introduce quite a bit of human error, which automation can eliminate. Liquid handlers of today can perform the exhausting pipetting actions, preserving time and accelerating research. However, they are also quite complex and commercialized machines that range within the tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars. They can also be quite large and difficult to transport, which could make them impractical for smaller scale laboratories such as those used in clinics or universities. Our client needed an inexpensive custom system since performance of specific experimental procedures with specialized operation are required, along with a QR code recognition system. We, Systemic Automation, have taken upon the project of designing and fabricating an automated device for the Stem Cell Engineering Lab to perform specific seeding and extraction features for stem cell engineering applications. We are a group of six mechanical engineering students with a wide range of skills and have come together to tackle on this exciting and innovative project. Key stakeholders worth mentioning include our client, Dr. Terry Sachlos, the director of the Stem Cell Engineering Lab as well as different users and institutions that may be interested in using our device to conduct cell culturing and drug screening. And lastly, there may be competitors that make similar but unspecialized devices at higher price ranges. Within the early stages of the project, as well as progressively throughout the year, we developed a detailed list of requirements under direct and indirect requests to the client, along with project and budget limitations. These major requirements include being able to seed and extract 100 microliters of liquid containing the cells into and from the well plates, as well as being able to handle 596 well plates per experiment or operation of the machine, allowing for higher than the client's regular experimental throughput. We also need to be able to dispose of biohazard waste in a safe manner, and to be able to work within a biosafety cabinet, which is a sterile and ventilated area specific to cell culturing experiments. Components coming into close contact with biological samples must be made out of materials that can be disinfected and autoclaved. Our device must also be compatible with existing laboratory instruments within the stem cell engineering lab. And lastly, our device must read and log QR codes for inventory tracking of well plates that are going in and out of the system. Sensor can also be used in a variety of applications and experiments. One of the possible uses of Spencer is in the field of automated drug screening, where it can be implemented in experiments that require high throughput and have demanding deadlines. We are currently under a pandemic, which is depleting medical resources at a high rate. But with further development, Spencer can be deployed in hospitals and clinics where drug screening on viruses are taking place to increase throughput and help in the search for a vaccine. In addition, the portable, low-cost, and user-friendly nature of Spencer allows for it to be used in virtually any laboratory environment where expensive and commercialized equipment is unattainable. Currently, the device is produced for the stem cell engineering lab within York University. However, it can also be used for high throughput of well plate preparation where basic pipetting actions are needed. This could include other universities and laboratories around the world in which cell culturing is being practiced. Now we'll discuss the design of the machine. We have gone through many iterations and have arrived at a final design which is both elegant and functional. Spencer's brain is composed of two Arduino boards. The main board in charge of core XYZ motion is an Arduino Mega, and the board that controls the syringe pump is an Arduino Nano. The design is relatively based on open source 3D printer electronic systems and utilizes many of the same components used for a 3D printer. Spencer's user interface was created on Visual Studio based on the .NET framework. The main board was flashed with Marlin firmware to mimic similar features to that of the common 3D printer. Actuation and communication between the Nano and the Mega for the syringe pump was coded in the Arduino IDE. 
The machine has a wide variety of features, which we will now showcase. One of the key features of this device is the syringe pump, which moves the liquid in and out of the pipette tips. The syringe pump has eight separate syringes, which mount to a linear actuator. It lies in the base of the machine and connects to the head via a flexible tubing, which is filled with water to avoid issues with the compressibility of air. On the other end of the syringe pump are a set of nozzles which accept disposable P200 pipettes. Liquid is pulled into the tips from a reservoir and then dispensed into well plates as needed. The pipette tips are loaded onto the nozzles by driving the Z-axis downwards into the nozzles which are held in a standard tray. The nozzles are spring-loaded to allow for compliance with the tips and prevent crashes. Tip removal is accomplished via a spring-loaded mechanism which actuates when the Z is moved all the way to the top limit of its travel. Lid removal and replacement are accomplished using a vacuum gripper. The vacuum gripper is driven by a small vacuum pump and the suction is released using a solenoid valve which opens the vacuum line. Here we can see the mechanism which actuates the vacuum cup. A small servo is used for motion and a miniature linear rail guides the motion. A drip tray is mounted to the head of the machine to prevent stray droplets on the pipette tips from contaminating the machine. The tray is actuated using a small servo and a linear rail, similar to the vacuum pump mechanism. The drip tray is easily removed via a spring-loaded plunger. This allows it to be cleaned easily. The primary movements of the machine are achieved via a three-axis gantry-style motion system. Here you can see the machine performing a full seating operation. This is the gantry of the machine. It is made from 6061T6 aluminum. The x-axis has a single linear rail and is driven by a NEMA 17 motor using a GT2 belt. The y-axis has a linear rail on each side and is driven on both sides by NEMA 17 motors and GT2 belts. Inductive proximity sensors are used for homing on all axes. The z-axis is driven by a NEMA 17 with an integrated 4-start 8mm pitch lead screw. It is guided by a single linear rail in an offset configuration to minimize size. Tips are disposed into a bag at the front of the machine. The bag is held in place by stretching it over a set of tabs. The trays are identified via a QR code on the lid, which is read using a camera mounted to the head of the machine. The camera is fully functional, however the software to scan and record the codes is not yet complete. To allow operators to stop the machine quickly, an emergency stop button has been implemented. It is mounted in an external box with a long cord so that it can be used outside of a biosafety cabinet. The base of the machine can hold 20 trays at a time, allowing for five simultaneous experiments utilizing two well plates and two tip plates each. This layout maximizes the available space in the intended biosafety cabinet. Cable management is achieved using drag chains on the X and Y axes. These force the cables to move smoothly along the axes and prevent snags while giving the machine a neat appearance. 